The Human Development Institute hosts the State of HDI podcast. The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the speakers and may not reflect the views of the University of Kentucky. A downloadable transcript is available in the description. Thank you for listening. Welcome to the State of HDI, a podcast of the University of Kentucky Human Development Institute. We explore the initiatives and projects at the Human Development Institute, a university center for excellence on disability. I'm Patty Singleton, and in the studio, I have Austin Nugent. Austin is a disability program administrator across multiple HDI projects, promoting health, well-being, and inclusion. Austin, it's so good to see you. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. So first, I want to know a little bit about what are the experiences that led you to the University of Kentucky? So there's quite a few. I am actually originally from Southern California. And when I was in high school, my mom surprisingly told me that her and my dad were expecting a child. Um, And so I have a little brother that was born with Down syndrome. And so that kind of is the catalyst that, um, you know, got me on this journey of disability and really that passion and that what sparked my passion and disability and inclusion and all the, the wonderful things around that. I went to college and I got actually a minor in disability studies. And after I graduated, I moved to Portland, Oregon, where I met my now husband, who is originally from Louisville. And um, he was like, I plan to move back home and go back and get my doctorate. Like, what are your thoughts on moving to Kentucky? And I was super on board with it. I Every time I had visited, I loved Kentucky. I loved the people. I loved um, you know, all the greenery and just everything about it. So moved to Kentucky. Um, and then that is when I actually connected with a few um, HGI employees through my colleagues at a national level. And I was like, super interested in working with you all. If there's ever an opportunity, like here's my re- resume. About six months after moving to Kentucky, I got the call that there was a job available for me at HGI, and I was really ecstatic. Um, And so that was what initially connected me to UK. But then from the perspective of me as a student, I had always thought about going back to school to get my graduate degree. Um, And then when I got hired by the university, you know, there is that incentive for employees to pursue additional education. So that is when I applied both for, at the time before it was LEN, was HGI's um, graduate certificate in developmental disabilities, but then also the Masters of Public Administration program. And here we are. And yes, here we are. And I (laughs) I love all of those personal experiences and especially kind of your firsthand um, experiences with your brother that led you into the field. Um, and that really kind of brought you in, in your experiences, you're now recognized as an emerging leader by the Association of University Centers on Disability, a national organization. So tell me how have those interactions with other emerging leaders shaped your work? Well, unfortunately, I really didn't get much of an opportunity to connect with other emerging leaders as much as I would have hoped. Um, however, I will say just being part of the national AUCB network definitely has impacted and shaped my work, but also just being connected to other disability advocates and professionals across the nation is it's just such a been such a great opportunity to not only just connect with other like-minded people, but share ideas, learn from each other, hear what other states are doing, and then bring that information back to Kentucky or share about all the wonderful things that are happening at HDI to support other states to, you know, to implement and make advances and changes that are going to support inclusion and disability rights in their state. So I would say just that opportunity of being able to just connect with folks that I probably wouldn't have 
been able to connect with if I wasn't connected with AUCD has been really um, influential on my work, both as a student as well as a um, professional. That's fantastic. And then kind of building on that, um, I think that your generation is definitely one that will forever be marked by the pandemic and everything that changed. So can you tell us a little bit about your learning experiences, the impact that that had, and then how it's changed what you know about yourself and your work and learning styles? I know I applied for graduate school right around when the pandemic started. And so I've only ever done remote um, learning for as far as my graduate program, which was very different than undergrad where every day you're, you know, on campus and you're, you're kind of more forced to interact with students and your classmates and your teachers where in a virtual online learning environment, it's kind of up to you how much you're going to be interacting with others. Um, and so at times I kind of had to force myself. I'm like, yes, it's really easy to just like do the bare minimum because I'm not having to interact with my classmates as much, but you soon realize that there's so much more to learn and gain from your educational experience when you're you know, taking the time to like go to those office hours and connect with your classmates, um, not only during class hours, which is the same for in person, but it does take a little bit more effort. Um, but where I live in Louisville and UK is in Lexington, I actually found quite a few perks of um, the virtual learning because I wasn't having to drive to Lexington um, two to four times a week, which was actually really great because that gave me more time back in my, in my day to, you know, focus on like the actual learning part of school rather than just the commute. And I also just learned, I really liked a virtual learning environment. I feel like it gave me a lot more flexibility, um, especially being a full-time working professional while I'm in grad school. And then um, where I do have like chronic migraines and OCD, it also made sure that I was being able to still make it to my therapy appointments. And then if I had a migraine flare up, I could, you know, tend to that, but also have the flexibility to get my school work done and my school not be as impacted. And I love what you said about your learning styles, because that definitely talks a lot about universal design and how important it is to have these systems in place to be flexible for students. So universal design is really woven throughout the work we do at HDI. Austin, can you tell me how this work has shaped your own views on universal design and its importance in our society? Yeah, so I was actually first exposed to universal design very early on in my career, right after I graduated from my undergraduate program and I moved to Portland, Oregon. I connected with a disability organization um, that focused on education. And so universal design was very much integrated into all of the work that they were doing in universal design for learning. So when I first connected with HGI, I was very excited to see universal design as a priority area because it's very much a priority area in my in my life. It's something that I'm incredibly passionate about. Um, and so the more that I've gotten to work with universal design as HGI, it's just really strengthened my belief that universal design truly is this incredible tool that not only benefits people with disabilities, or like you pointed out, students, um, but it benefits everybody. And so that's really become my message in all of the work that I've done with HGI. Yes, our work is focused and centered around disability and inclusion, but really it's when professionals implement and use universal design, it benefits everybody. Um, and so really we should all be doing it. I am a huge, huge advocate for universal design. I often joke with folks that it is like one of my favorite things, jokingly saying I would get it tattooed on my body because that's how much I believe in universal design and the power of it. That's a beautiful statement. And I can only imagine what, you know, that tattoo would look like. 
<laughs> so um, your work at HCI just continues to evolve, starting with inclusive health, and now you're working on some additional projects focused on employment outcomes of people with disabilities. So tell me, how has that exposure to all of these different systems and projects helped you in your personal goal of inclusion? I have personal experience with disability, both from my biological brother who has Down syndrome, but then I also have two adoptive brothers that due to some pretty adverse childhood experiences in their early years, they um, have their own disabilities and support needs that my family is continuing to learn about. And so being able to work in an environment like HGI across various systems and learn how the systems work and you know, familiarize myself with those systems has really helped my family um, first and foremost, because I can take that knowledge that I'm learning about like, oh, you know, this is how the education system is like structured or there's this law or there's this tool or there's this resource that exists and then being able to, to share that with my parents to then hopefully have a positive impact on my brother's lives. You know, in turn, my personal experiences also influence and inform my professional uh, experiences and what I'm doing from work because I can draw on those personal experiences. And sometimes those frustrations when you're trying to navigate what can be very complex systems at times and bring that that firsthand experience to the table and be like, hey, like, you know, let's think about this as we work towards, you know, systems change and making sure these systems are more accessible and inclusive of people with disabilities. Um, with the goal always being <laughs> systems and resources um, should be inclusive. And in order to do that, we should be using things like universal design and be thinking about disability and other demographics from the start and from the design and the development um, rather than an afterthought. Austin, that's so great. And I love that your personal experiences and also your family history has really helped to guide that um, and, and certainly break down some of the, the myths that exist um, as well as help with that system improvement, like you said. So finally, last question, as a graduate student, you've been given plenty of advice and so tell me, what is some of the advice that has resonated with you that you might share with other students? I think one thing, and it actually came from a colleague at HDI where my, I got my master's in public administration. So really thinking about policy and system change, I thrive on immediate gratification. And so as many people know, system change is very slow. And so getting that advice from someone who has been in the field much longer than I and having them be like, you know, it's like an iceberg, we're chipping away at it. That really helped me kind of settle into like, okay, I'm in the right program. Um, so I would say just from that interaction, like it's so important to, to connect with other folks who have similar interests who and have mentors. Um, because they are going to give you advice when you're feeling stuck, which ultimately will happen when you're a student, like you'll question, like, is this really what I want to be doing? Am I in the right program? Is this, you know, worth the time and the energy, um, or you're feeling stressed or overwhelmed, um, which I felt a lot of times, um, throughout my program. But then another thing, um, was a very helpful piece of advice. And it's something that I don't think students truly really capitalize on but is to use the resources that are made available to students you know i regularly connected with my professors even being in a virtual learning environment like i made sure i was staying in touch with my professors and faculty you know whether it was email or zoom or going to office hours or connecting on campus because they really do want to see their students succeed. And so when you're feel, having those moments of feeling stuck or you're feeling like you're overwhelmed, they were able to kind of help get me out of that rut, rut and help guide me um, and reassure me that like, you're, you know, you're in the right place. And then one other piece of advice, and it goes back to that earlier question about just the impact that being part of a national network has had on my own learning experience is 
to seek out opportunities. You know, you may not always find an opportunity readily available that aligns with your interest or a, the need that you have for like a program requirement for school. Um, but in those moments, don't be afraid to reach out to an organization or organizations that um, do have a mission that aligns with your own mission and your own values um, and ask and see if they would be willing to create something for you. So for me, I had to do an internship for my MPA and I'd already had eyes and been connected to Kentucky Protection and Advocacy because they're doing systems change and they're advocating um, and working with policy in a setting that I am very passionate about related to disability rights and inclusion. Um, and so I just connected with them and I said, okay, here's my need as a student. Do you all have a need that can be mutually beneficial for the both of us? And they were able to work with me and I was able to satisfy my learning requirement for my program, but also get this really enriching learning opportunity that really sparked my interest and really solidified that like, yep, this is what I'm passionate about. So I would say that would probably be one of the best pieces of advice I got during my learning experiences. Seek out opportunities. And if there's not one available, like see how you can create an opportunity for yourself by connecting with others. It's really great advice, Austin. Well, I thank you so much for sitting down with us today. Always a pleasure to see you. Yes, thank you so much for having me.